Hello and welcome to the weekly emotional awareness discussion, normally live at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday night. But this week we are going to do things a little bit differently. You know me, I always like to mix things up a little. So this week, um, because my guest today, uh, Matthew Sims, has got pre pre-planned, you know, work and that. So what we've agreed to do to do is to do. I'm going to completely mess that up. <laughs> I think I will edit after all. <laughs> I'm just saying before we come on, I don't normally edit, but you know what? Go with it. I'm all about just accept who you are. I'm normally I go live. I'm absolutely fine. Do it on pre-record. I mess it up. Do you know what? Let's roll with it. So Matthew has got work commitments and couldn't make the 7 p.m. live. So we've agreed to do a pre-record. And then what I'm going to do is put it on a YouTube premiere for seven o'clock and you'll be able to see it live, which you won't know until you see it. But you'll know that's what we've done. So it's going to be completely different tonight. And But let me know how you find it, whether you find it easier to tag in and watch it as and when it goes live or whether you prefer the live, because if this works better for you, we might do it again. So anyway, welcome today to my guest, Matthew Sharkey Sims. And I believe most people know you as Sharkey. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. No. Oh, thanks. I appreciate your time and um, changing things to, to, to suit me. I really appreciate that. No, I thought it was that you're fine. And I appreciate your time too, because, you know, it's amazing having a show like this. Where we can inspire people every week. But a show like this doesn't happen without guests like you. So you're more important than me because otherwise I think they'd get fed up with listening to me 52 weeks in a row on my own. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Um, so I connected with Matthew recently over, uh, we were connected by a friend, a coach. I think we've got a mutual friend or coach. And she connected us and said she thought it would be worth us having a conversation. And she knew a little bit about Matthew's background and she knew about my Matthew's background. That's a coincidence. So I'm um, sorry, would you like me to refer to you as Matthew or Sharky throughout? Because I really don't mind. Either's fine. Okay. So she connected us both and we had a chat and agreed to do the talk. And I think the fair thing for me to do is to say for you to do a little bit of an introduction about yourself first and tell people about. Uh, your background, what you do, and uh, how that's brought you here today. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thanks for that. Um, oh, pardon me. So really, uh, we're, we're going to go on to the topic, obviously, um, shortly. But in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. it's been, for me, a journey of kind of personal development, um, working on myself um, based on something that happened that I'm sure we'll touch on um, and I went you know now I uh, I do them things for a living that I that I invested in so I invested firstly in physical stuff because I needed to rebuild my body and then it was then it was about my mind um, actually the same thing they come together but that's the order I did it um, and now obviously most of the stuff that I do is around the mind even though I, I do participate in fitness coaching at a gym as well. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. That's great. So, yeah, so you do physical and uh, mental coaching, which is brilliant. And it, it's so fascinating to hear somebody so young as yourself talking about that and this personal development journey. And it's so inspiring because very often it's people like my age, you know, I'm used to people my age going, not only have they been through it, then they're seeing the kids go through it, and then we learn that on the way through our kids' journey. Um, so it's great to see somebody younger actually embracing this. And not only that, being then brave enough to come and speak about it and share it to help other people and inspire others. So well done to you, and thank you. So you say the journey goes back about 10 years. Uh, what sort of happened at the start of your journey to sort of initiate all of this? um well it's 10 years ago this october <clears throat> um i tried to take my own life um okay. and got very close um okay. and then i was in a coma for six weeks oh goodness uh, um, and then when i woke up um i took obviously um adjust to reality let's say yes uh, and then that was the the start of it um the, the 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 first thing that i learned when i woke up was my 
perspective, my perspective of myself and the outer world is based on my reality. Yeah. My my inner mm-hmm. world. Yeah. Um, and the reality I had to face when I woke up was the truth because I I I had no recollection of what had happened. Um, mm. I didn't remember what had happened, um, and I'd been living a great life asleep. Okay. <laughs> and I yeah. lived an amazing life, like a dream life, um, with some challenges, obviously. Yeah. But um, it was like that was my reality. So when I woke up, I thought that was actually true. And because even though quoted from my friends and family said they're not mm-hmm. never seen me so happy in in my adult years they That's also true. had to figure out if I'd lost my mind so okay. for them and the probably the, the the very necessary truth that I needed to learn was what actually happened and as soon as I remembered and uh, and kind of accepted that I'd actually tried to do that. Um, that's when the journey started again. That's yeah. when I, I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's and, very a very vulnerable share. Thank you. Um, obviously, it sounds like a you know you saying about the start of your journey, but that's the start of your new journey because obviously there was an old journey that led you there to begin with, and I obviously won't expect you to open up about that unless you're comfortable. But, but certainly from this point of trying to take your life, as you say, I think there, there is this thing about reality and what is reality. It's quite a philosophical topic. And like you say, for everybody, reality is only from their own point of view. And it, it takes a strong person to see something from somebody else's point of view. And it's quite a skill to do that. But for majority of us, we are just looking at the world from from here. Like for me, it's here. Everything's out you know, I don't see the world from where you are. I don't even see the world from where my neighbour is. I see it from here and the same for you. And that's difficult for a lot of young people to, I think, to, to grasp is that what they think is reality is only their own reality, but that they can change that. And I think that it sounds like you realised you had the power to change that reality. And, and that's a really powerful message. So you say you started by going into physical fitness. So, so tell us a bit more about your, your sort of journey forward from there. Yeah, so um, I was a builder before I went to hospital. That's what I did okay. um, general. Uh, I say a builder. I was mainly the labourer, but I was starting to get handy. Um, and then, obviously, when I, when I uh, come out of hospital, I'd lost two stone. Uh, I was blind in one eye completely deaf in my right ear and yes. I was incredibly weak physically uh, obviously because I've been laid up for six wow. weeks um, and so the majority of the time I spent when I went home was in my bed I was exhausted I you know I struggled mm. um, I didn't spend much time on my feet for about the first month and then I started getting more energy first thing I did was redecorate my room <laughs> Um, and then I started going to the gym again. And the boundary at the gym was that I always had someone with me. And um, I was reminded that, that I was not who I used to be because I used to train regularly. Okay. Um, and then as soon as I started being able to have, to rely on my energy consistently, um, that's when I started rebuilding my body intentionally so eating and supplementing training a bit more often and for a bit longer um and within two months i was back to my strength if not exceeded my strength Uh, two months after the first month of recovery um and then uh i went back to so that was like end of october november I think I was back on the building site in March, had my first day back at work in March the next year. And uh, (laughs) the guy that obviously knew my situation, and I remember him saying, you don't need to work this hard. That's all I knew. I was working for someone different. I didn't know. I'd never worked with him before. They were a bit more laid back. Uh, I wasn't. 
I was a grafter, so but I'm not saying they didn't work hard, they did. It's just I didn't stop. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> you know, you're gonna need a break. I was like, I did, I could barely walk uh, the day after. Yeah. Um, but within within another month or so, I was back at the gym and working five days a week on a building site. And I think that for me was um, a very clear indication of what you know you can do when you focus on something. Yes. And also, uh, kind of, you know, you hear people, or sorry, my my experience of hearing things like, you know, the body's always stronger after a break, and your body's a wonderful thing, and I I, I agreed with that very soon after that. That was evident to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was that, and then I just uh, I just thought, okay, maybe I can do fitness again. Or well, maybe I can start doing fitness for a living because a part of me didn't particularly want to carry on with building. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that's that was the start of that. Well, that's that's that is such a powerful journey, and and I just can't imagine. You know, I can't I can't even imagine what that was like from your point of view, and to come back so strong um, it, it is just so inspirational. It really is. And I, you know, it's, I'm just sorry that you, you know, for you, you had to go through that first. Um, you know, we all have moments of rock bottom, um, but, you know, for some it's a lot deeper and darker than others. And, but you've come back from it incredibly well, incredibly well. You should be so proud of yourself. And the few little bits I've picked up on there is the first thing you said about was changing your room, decorating your room. Mm. And that's something I've talked about. We've had a, had a previous speaker on about colour and vibration. So I'm just curious, did you change the colour of your room at that point? Yeah, it's, um, it's like red and uh, like red and beigey colour. Yeah. It's, so uh, it's very bright. Bright yeah. colours, oh, brilliant. I don't, was, I don't know why it was red at the time, but it's like a dark red a bit. <laughs> it's a little bit yeah. crazy, to be honest, even though I'm <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like you know, the the wallpaper. There's like a, a, a feature wall with wallpaper, and it's um, it's yeah. a nice multicolored. But yeah, it's it's look, mm. it's nice. I like my room. It's good. Yeah, and I know it might seem insignificant, but it, to, to me, actually, that stands out as a really significant move for you, um, because as I say, changing the color and things around you, and changing your surroundings changes your mindset as well, and and that give it, it was almost like giving yourself a fresh start. And take you know doing something for yourself as well, your space and, and making that a place you wanted to be alive and wanted to be safe and you know wanted somewhere to wake up and feel energetic. And I I think you know as might as that not be what we're here to talk about today is decorating rooms. You know I'm really picking up that obviously that for you to have even mentioned it was a key part of you saying right I need a fresh start and that you know that's. Mm. Yeah, I think just to go off what you said is definitely relevant because it was the first time I'd acknowledged or made a decision to do something actively, physically, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. kind of my starting point. Because um, I spent so much time in my room, I, I needed to, I wanted to look at it, you know, I wanted to enjoy yeah. it. The hardest job was scraping the Artex off the ceiling. Oh, goodness, yes. That, that took me all day. <laughs> And I remember I was exhausted. That, funny enough, was mm. my main memory is how tiring that was. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that was, mm. that was good. Yeah. And I think another point about that is, as I know this sounds like we're going off topic, but I think it's relevant, is actually just the sheer process of planning it and doing all those different tasks are quite mindful as well. Like, like sitting down and thinking, right, what colour am I going to have? What patterns am I going to have? What tools have I got? And it's like equipping yourself. And then you said spending a whole day even doing one thing, it gives you time to perhaps think things through while you're keeping busy. Um, and, you know, I think this is good. I think this is all good tips and tricks for other people is that sometimes setting yourself a little project like that can be a great way of, of getting yourself back on track. And, and now I'm, I'm, yeah, that's amazing. So you sense it, obviously, you know, you, you've gone through this process of decorating your room and realised that you then need to use your, your physical health more and uh that but I'm, I'm really shocked as well and you say about being deaf and blind um have you regained that or was that temporary uh the, the um the sight was temporary the hearing is completely gone oh goodness oh, i'm sorry to hear oh. that yeah yeah no, 
Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I missed really it. Funny. Sorry. That was really funny. He, he said, "I'm oh, sorry to hear that." I was like, "No pun intended." <laughs> oh no! Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. You, you I mean, half hear me, yeah? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's great really... that you've still got a sense of humour. That's always <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah. I, I actually, um, I actually remember. Actually, if I may, this is another significant moment. So, obviously, when I'd, when I'd, you know, the the goals that I gave myself in the gym were my own. I wasn't competing with who I was because I wasn't the same person. I'm still okay. Matthew Sims, still Sharky, but, um, you know, I acknowledged I had to have, accept the consequences of my decision. And therefore I was in competition with myself, not anyone else. And I think that's important right. in the fitness, in a gym, competing mm -hmm. and comparing is massive. And yeah. I had none of that. And I still have none of that today, unless I'm using it for fuel. Mm -hmm. I do something different now fitness wise um but um i actually i remember praying to get my eyesight back because um i found it very difficult um from a self-image perspective um to walk around with a patch on so i walked around with an eye patch on okay and uh you know i remember experiences of people making comments and saying things and um it got to the point where um, I was like, man, I don't know if I can deal with this. But like, part of me found that so hard. Uh, and I mm -hmm. prayed my eyesight would come back. I said, if you didn't give me anything, uh, not that, you know, it's not, you know, people make deals with God or whatever, universe, whatever you want to call it all the time. And uh, I kind of said, I really appreciate it. And I'd mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't ask for anything else ever again. And uh, I remember waking up and just seeing clearly and being absolutely ecstatic so happy yeah oh i can well yeah. imagine yeah yeah so that that was that was that was a tough challenge yeah. that was really, and I, I i when i do gratitude journaling now and um i always say how grateful i am for the senses i've got oh that's Ooh. incredible yeah yeah i can appreciate that in in terms of for me it's I, I appreciate so much being able to breathe and it it sounds like a classic one but for 40 years I was chronic asthmatic I have been nebulized I think about 200 times I lost count I, I don't even know mm. um you know I've I've laid on the floor for eight hours waiting for somebody to find me because I couldn't even shout you know if you haven't got any breath you can't even shout for help so I've spent an entire night laying on the floor, not being able to get up, waiting for somebody to come and find me. And um, so I understand what you mean when you've got something like the ability to go, wow, I can take a deep breath. It, it, the gratitude is is a whole new level than the person who's just automatically, autonomically breathed all their life and never give it a second thought. And so, yes, I get that. I get that. And, and you know, with, like you say, that sight hearing and... Um, that must have been been a huge moment for you. So, did you celebrate? Um, I I'm sure I did in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I remember hanging up all my eye patches as a memento, of, like in a place I'd see them, so I'd recognise how lucky I was. That's amazing. Mm. I like that. Amazing. I've still got them now, mm. actually, in my room. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That that is amazing. Yeah. So, no, I, I get that. I get that. So, uh, yeah, so it's um, incredible you've been through this, this journey with the fitness as well. And, and that you've then, and like so many people I've had on this show who've talked about trauma they've been through and then turned it into a triumph. And not only for their own journey, but it's then that paying it forward and turning that into a purpose to help other people. That's what's so amazing as well. And you've, you've now taken this on as your new career is to help other people. Um, so how do you find your experience? Do you share that with people that you're helping or, or do you just enjoy doing that for the, sort of for the sake of it? Um, fitness wise, mm. I share that with people. If, uh, if someone is, is um, worried about an injury or if someone relays or refers to who they 
were. Mm. It's it's not some I wouldn't necessarily share my own story, but that's kind of time that I would maybe um, engage in a bit of coaching. Okay. Um, just because for me, um, people, yeah, people usually come to me with, um, you know, the not the the regular stuff that you might expect in a fitness facility. You know, mm -hmm. uh, weight loss exercise. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, occasionally, I've shared my story, um, but only if I thought it was relevant to, to me yeah, here enough. again, and also for them, because it's not about me; it's about them. But if it was, it, you know, about it does it kind of be inspiring to hear about people's journeys. At the same time, it has a consequence. Not everyone is inspired by that because they start thinking, well. You know, they may start thinking, "Well, I'm not them. I can't do that." Um, that's my experience, anyway. Yeah, oh, that's incredible. And I'm gonna say, just just to hear you talk about other people and the way you do, and about helping them, about being about them, and to hear you now, and how absolutely incredibly mature you are about, um, you know, all of this in terms of how you've handled it, how you've handled what happened to you originally, how you've regrown your your own physical strength, your life, your career. Um, you know, it, it almost sort of begs to wonder how you even ended up there in the first place. And again, not wanting to pry. Um, but it's, is, is there, did you ever feel at any point, like if something had been a little bit different, you might not have ended up there to begin with? If somebody had perhaps taken time to listen to you or you'd have reached out to somebody, you know, if, if somebody else was at that low point where they felt. And, and again, I also know from my own son having had suicidal depression, but he, he was uh, he was suffered on and off for about 12 years. It was a long, long time, but he never actually obviously got as far as, as you did. Um, you know, and he'd, he'd attempted, but not not in a, in, a, in a way he succeeded to injure himself in any way. Um, but if somebody else was feeling that way, what advice would you give them? So I do say, do say if you don't want to answer anything, if it's uncomfortable. Uh, no, no, sorry, I was exhaling because for me that's a, that's a big question. Yeah. Um, if someone asks me their advice. Mm. That would be the first step. I wouldn't give them if they didn't ask it. Okay. It'd be like it'd be like uh, watching um, Batman and him coming in to rescue someone, and them saying, "Now nah, you're right. I don't want rescuing today." Yeah. There has to be there has to be a reach from the person that's in a situation where they need help, and they have to acknowledge that. Yeah. For that's... me, my memory of it, Kay, was that I was very ready for help. I was open about it. Firstly, people, um, okay, that's a bit of a general statement. Um, I'd say generally we are not taught how to uh, have conversations with people like that. That's why there are Samaritans and counsellors and whatever for that purpose. Mm. General public, family, friends, people like that, they we you know that's not something we're taught the only thing we are taught is our experience of how we were brought up how we were in how we you know how we exist in social groups how we see friends families and you know our experience of that that's that's how we help other people the way we experience being helped or not helped mm. uh, so I, I really very good question yeah. by the way. I appreciate that no no that's all right I'm for me I, I I do I do think this a lot because obviously I have spoke to people that have suicidal ideation or um mm -hmm. and parts of them are attached to what I like to call the 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 martyr the the, the suicide what it represents for me, it represents control. 
I can control yeah. the outcome of my life if I end it. Yeah. This is why I attach to the idea of doing it. Mm. It doesn't necessarily mean I'll do it, but it does mean that I can attach to that and I can pretty much predict how my life, how, what I do, my behaviours, who I'm around, how I feel. I can pretty much predict all of that with this thought process. That makes sense. Yeah. It's, very, it's, uh, it's very predictable. And we like things that are predictable. We have an yeah. ego. We are spiritual mm. beings having a physical experience, if you believe that kind of thing. Yeah. That's the reason why we're here. Um, and I, if someone asked my advice, how do I, um, how can I stop feeling like I want to kill myself? It's the first thing I do is ask them a question back. Yeah. And see how much they were willing to look into different things because i think understanding is one thing because people can say to you you are you are amazing you are this you are mm -hmm. you know we're all special which we are you know it's incredibly the odds of you being who you are born to your family where you're born with your siblings with your parents is so astronomically you know you you stand oh, more yeah. winning the lottery 77 times in a row you know it's yeah Astronaut. I get that. Yeah. When you, when you think of being the one, like they say, the one in a million that won the race, and you think about that for how many generations that human civilization has been on Earth, what were the chances of you being here? Yeah. And um, don't waste it. <laughs> you know, you're here for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> and it might not feel it at times, but yeah, no, sorry. Well, yeah, that's it. You know, that's my, mm. you know, you can, you hear stuff like that all the time on mm. social media, on Instagram, on whatever. And for me, that is a nice message. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely true. That's true for our souls, maybe, and our spirit. Our human side, part of that is very hard to accept. Yeah. Um, and with what I heard you say about all the people that shared their trauma and made someone out of it, and the relation you made to the journey being part of the journey it's it's you know your journey takes you to the trauma and then the trauma the next part of the journey it's the same thing mm. um that's yeah you know that when you look at turn around and think actually is that what is that what i'm here to share that's mm. a, a big moment because then you have purpose anyone that wants to end their life feels like they have no purpose or place on this earth um mm. or belonging in the house they were born into that's my opinion yeah. that's how i felt that's how part of me mm. challenges myself still sometimes but very yeah. very rarely um, and it's very difficult to find that to actually find that purpose at times for some people i think they they struggle all their life to find that um but it's about not giving up and it's about you know understanding your strengths and your weaknesses and you know, I think, I think to an element, if you're not feeling that purpose, you've got to begin that journey of self-discovery and, and personal development to be able to find that. And for me, it ended up being emotional awareness, which is not what I said I wanted to, you know, if somebody said, what are you going to be when you leave school? I would never have said an emotional awareness expert. <laughs> I wanted to be a photographer, but here I am sort of, you know, 40 years later in a 30 years later, in a completely different arena that would never have been mentioned back then. Mm -hmm. and and so yeah it, life does sometimes lead you on those journeys so sometimes you know a lot of a lot of youngsters they leave school and they get jobs that seem meaningless they're not enjoying them and I know my own children you know my own son he's been there as well like you know I really don't like this job whatever but he's aware that it's a stepping stone and at the right time that purpose will come out but sometimes it just takes a bit of a journey to get there but it's I think it's also about being aware, like we said, rock bottom. If you feel like you're heading towards rock bottom, stop and start that personal development journey before it gets worse. Don't wait until it's is really at that last moment for me would be that advice is, is catch it early. And I know what you're saying. I, it wouldn't I wouldn't stand there and say that to somebody who wouldn't ask my advice. 
but I take it that if somebody's watching this video, that is a form of them seeking advice. And, and also for, you know, for parents and educators who are watching, um, if they're faced with a teenager who's asking this, again, it's, it's great advice for them to be able to support those, those young adults and those teenagers as well. And, and I get with the control. I, I knew somebody years ago who did sadly take his life and he was very much the same way. Um, didn't want to live past 30 years old and that's, you know, just, just didn't see any purpose in life and didn't feel like he belonged. And that was his one way of knowing he had control over his own outcome. And, uh, unfortunately he did succeed, sadly. Um, and I've known other people try for different reasons. So for some people, I think it's not so much a control as an escape. Like they, they no longer know how to face up to reality. So I think there is a flip side to it as well. So there's control side and then there's the, the escape side. Like, like feeling like there's no other options, no other way to change life back to make it better. But actually there are. And, and you've shared today, you know, some incredible messages about how that is possible. Everybody can do it. They can. And it's it just about, I think realizing that we all have to put ourselves first, put ourselves as number one. And uh, that reminds me actually something I didn't, I've never told anybody about the little logo, the K, the K Reeve logo. It takes a lot of people a second glance to realize that that is the K and the R together for K Reeve. But actually the straight back on the number, the, the K is also a number one. And that's to remind people to put themselves first, look after yourself, because you can't expect other people to do it for you. But when you do look after yourself and you go on that personal development journey and you grow, the people around you will change too. And I'm pretty sure you found that the people around you are a better quality, are better with you than they would have been before. I'd say my experience of people has changed, yeah. Yeah. It does. And I, and I think, again, my, with my own son, he found that, that as he began to change, the people around him changed as well. Some people said, oh, I've realised that hanging around with Matt makes me a better person. And actually said that to me personally one day. Um, and then for other people, they're like, oh, I don't like him anymore. And they've cleared off. Um, not quite that simply. But, you know, to me, it was a case of once he found his true value, the people that weren't of value to his life automatically ended up sort of removing themselves from his life and that left him surrounded with the better quality people the ones that genuinely wanted to be around him when he was completely unapologetically himself like if he wanted to say yeah I like doing this that and the other and not hiding stuff not fearing stuff and and being able to stand up and this this obviously you know we're talking sort of generically today but this could be a lot of people for a lot of reasons, such as it could be that they're worried about their age growing up, like they feel too old or too young for something. It could be about um, what race they are or, you know, what ethnic background. Uh, e even across the UK, we know what it's like when you've, your family moves from one county to another and you've got a different accent. Even I know the bullying I had at school, even for that. And um, kids are cruel. So you grow up with all of that. And it could be about uh, sexual orientation. It could be about kids when they get to an older sort of teenage stage and some drink, some smoke, some decide not to, some decide to go out and have sex with everybody possible and some decide to stay a virgin until they find the right person. And there's all these different, you know, kids have got all so many, so many complexities going on in their little life about going back to beginning their own reality that my goodness, it's, you know, hard to say, this is me, this is who I am. And I think that can lead, you know, under, under society and judgment and what the parents think and parents want versus what they want. I think a lot of this can lead to that, not for everybody. I know for some people there's also abuse and um, other reasons behind it as well. And I, I'm not obviously prying into yours, but there's so many reasons why a teenager or young adult can can end up going down this route to begin with but that for the for the adults around them it's about being open to being aware being you know just listening and, and being there at that right moment so that if they do want to talk they're you know they're aware that they've got that safe space for talking and i've actually been putting posts on my blog this week about 
creating safe space for talking. And I know you said, you know, you wanted to open up, but how do you? And I think that's a really important, again, another one I've really picked up on is being able to have that discussion with the right person is absolutely crucial. And, you know, for, for a majority of people watching this show, they will be the, the adults. And it's about inspiring them to learn the skills for creating that safe space for talking, for being able to sit there and make that person, that young adult feel safe to say, I want to speak about something, not feel judged, feel like they can sit in a calm environment. And I liken it to being like a first aider. If the first aider is going to panic and run like a headless chicken and get all sort of reactive and go, oh, it's their fault, they crashed the car, blah, blah, whatever, they're not going to be able to help the injured party. A first aider is somebody who's trained or a paramedic. They're trained and they've learned skills and they've got strategies to be able to go up and help that person who's injured. And I think it's the same emotionally. And I think all parents out there, you know, can learn some basic skills where they can say, okay, my my child is suffering emotionally. It might not be physically like an accident, but they might be suffering emotionally. And being able to, instead of running around like a headless chicken and blaming everybody and being judgmental, it's about being able to approach it in that same calm manner as a first aider or a paramedic and saying, right, let's follow this strategy. Let's see what we can discover and explore and how we can help and begin that healing process. And I think that's so important to understand that having a conversation, there's more to it than just sharing words. It's got to be sharing that safe space for that conversation. Sorry, once I start, I, I struggle to stop. I get off on a rant, but I think it's so important. And, you know, you, you, you touched on how that conversation would have been important for you. And I really want to inspire other parents to do that. So um, I'm aware that you've also got to, to go off and get something to eat for your next meeting. So I don't want to hold you up too much longer. Um, but is there anything else you want to share? Because you talk, talked a little bit about um, coaching earlier as well with mental coaching. We haven't touched on that. So would you like to just bring us back around on that and how that followed on from all the fitness? Yeah, well, it, it followed on pretty much exactly that time because, um, you know, I was – uh, doing great stuff in the gym, training a lot, probably a bit too much, but I was loving it. Um, yeah. a great social group as well. And I started doing different things that I'd never done before, like classes and okay. you know, yoga and different things like that. Um, and uh, I realised that I was... Um, I had some goals physically that I wanted to get. So I wanted to be a bit you know leaner for the summer i think a lot of people would be able to relate to that um and uh i asked for some help from uh p uh, uh my instructor in the class and uh, me and her um known each other for a while but she hadn't seen me and i told her what had happened and uh she was like oh my lord and and she shared that she does a lot of mindset or mental stuff in america she goes mm. once a year and she does something called listed coaching and i was like okay will it help me you know get what i want physically and and my mind she was like 100 percent. do you want to have a session and see what you think i was like yeah um and it, <laughs> i'll never forget um it was it was very simple uh, it was something along the lines of, you know, I can give you, I can help you get a six pack in 12 weeks. Or I can help you with what that, I can help you get the confidence you want, really, right now. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, that's what I wanted. It was nothing to do with the six pack. So that, that was kind of, uh, that kind of penny dropped and I'm like, oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then that was so. It's, so it's I, like you were thinking having the six pack would give you the confidence. Yeah, yeah. And very much like a lot of people want whitened teeth and tans and fake surgeries and you know all this plastic surgery. I should say not fake surgery. It's real surgery, but but 
plastic surgery. So there's lots of reasons why people attach the need for changes to themselves and their body to actually wanting to feel confident when actually, like you said, the confidence really should come first and deal with that and then see if they still want the other things afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that was it, really, and I've worked with her ever since. That's amazing. She's now my mentor. She even does her own holistic coaching training program now. She's got quite a good base of people. Um, mm-hmm. and she helps uh, business owners get out of their own way, mindset-wise, and uh, help mm-hmm. them holistically. There's quite a few uh, interesting different ways of doing that. I had a call with her earlier, actually. And, um, yeah, that's why my version of what I've experienced with her, along with my counselling training, I started counselling and became a psychotherapist counsellor in 2017. Oh, wow. Um, So, you know, the mind side of it was definitely uh, the forefront after the fitness, you know, I pretty much took over the fitness, still trained, but I uh, I did some fitness stuff, but it was mainly my own stuff. Um, Yeah invested everything in that um and that was where the changes started happening regularly then yeah the more, the more i worked on myself the better life got um didn't make it easy it got it, it got easier to to live um when i say easy yeah. to live you know you don't think the world's against you anymore um you start to change the way you interact with people and therefore the way they interact with you um have more boundaries um you don't no, no longer attract people that need you to make them feel better instead you attract people that you bounce off and you get on really well with and you're mm-hmm. you know you've got an equal energy exchange um yeah it's just it continues to happen and yeah. uh it's one of the i think it's i think experience is the best education ever i think uh, it's, absolutely I think that's what life is it's an experience so i i use experience when i talk to people all the time because i say you know i like my experience of uk i wouldn't say i, I like you i'd say i like my experience of you because yeah, that's what you. it is right yeah and that owns it that means it's through my perspective so when i have mm. an agreement with someone i can say okay uh, I accept that that's your experience and you yeah. feel that that's, that was your experience of what I said. Um, mm. May I share mine? Because mine's different. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I give negative energy back to people when I've, I experience them project it onto me. So I like that. It's really powerful. Because, you know, for me, it's always, you know, I've always understood that, um, especially with youngsters, it's the society is like, somebody says, oh, I don't like that person. And then they feel like they shouldn't like them to be friends with the first person that said it. And it, it, it's, it's, it very easily builds up and emotions are so viral. I mean, you know, we, we know that news breaks out and it's all around the world in minutes. And, you know, certainly within hours, within 24 hours, most of the world knows when something really negative has happened. But with positive emotions, it's much harder to do that and to share that positivity. Mm. And it's important to sometimes realize that and say, okay, that person's trying to share negative energy, but sometimes we've got to realize we've got to shield it and say, okay, so you don't like that person. You might have an issue with them. That doesn't mean I have to have the same experience. Like you said, you know, I can make my own mind up whether I like somebody or not. And and that was one of the things I tried to make clear with, with my own children growing up. Um, you know, when they're at school or in, in social circles with friends, is when somebody starts saying, oh, I don't like that person, or I've got an opinion, or, you know, they say, oh, that teacher's and you know, whatever they say, all sorts of things, kids are cruel. And it was about whatever they think is their opinion. You make up your own mind, and you have your own, you know, your own thoughts. And if you get on with that person, or you get on with that teacher, or, you know, you get on with that friend, then great, don't worry about what other people say. And that's really hard one for them to grasp and deal with at times. Um, but the children that do that and the young adults that do that, they, they've got a happier life. And it's like an emotional freedom to be able to say, that's my choice. I can like who I want to like, whether other people agree with me or not. I can like who I want to like. And uh, like you said, it's also the same is 
I used to find myself sitting through job after job, learning from everybody around me. But I realized there were some people I could learn from, that that's the things I want to be doing. Others I'd learn from, they're the things I don't want to be doing. So I didn't always look at everybody as a good person, a bad person. I looked at it as all as a learning experience, what I learned that I did want to do and what I didn't want to do, and learn either way. So it was about making it positive for me either way. And that's how I learned to get on with so many people over the years. Um, yeah, I could still like a person, but it didn't mean I wanted to do what they want to do or like what they were doing. But I, And it was about being able to identify um, different parts. Of, you know, some people could be amazing to work with, but you might not like them as a person outside of work. Whereas other people, I absolutely loved them as a person at work, could get on great with them, but I might not like the way they work. And it's about being able to separate all of that out. And like you said, that's how we experience people. But for the majority of, of people, they just either it's a, a love or a hate thing. And if you don't separate that out, you know, that's your own reality that you're just blocking off from an amazing life and, and you close yourself in. Um, and again, you were saying about uh, talking and not talking. And again, with my, with my son, I felt like for about five years, it was like he was facing this brick wall of depression saying, I don't want any help. And he refused to get help. He refused to let me help him. And yet I was there, but it was like all he had to do, if he just realized it was turn around and say, I need help. And actually everybody was there behind him. Everyone was behind him, ready to help him. But he was just turning his back on it all. And if you imagine that physically, you know, as well as metaphorically, it, it is just making that decision to actually just start to say, right, I need to turn my life around. And when you do, all the people that need to be in your life will be in your life and they will be there to support you and help you but it's just actually being open to that and just saying I need help because nobody can help you like you said earlier unless you say I need help but the minute you do they will be there and I've experienced that one over and over of the years that the people that I needed were in my life at the time I needed them so uh, Anyway, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here. Um, but I've, I, I'm aware you've got to get going, and I, I do appreciate so much you coming on today and sharing your story and and the inspiration that you've got. It really, really is a powerful message, and I hope this inspires some other people to really take that journey of personal development rather than just struggling through life. To actually be able to say, I need help, to be able to reach out and get coaching, to get mentors and to be able to talk to people in their life and say, look, this is what I'm going through. Even if it is just saying, I want to start by decorating my room, change the vibration of my room, start with that. But for everybody, thank you so much, Matthew, today. And uh, if there's any one last thing you want to share with us before we go, please do. Yeah. Um, well, just say thanks for your time. Um, and I love what you what you're doing, and um, yeah, okay. I think I've often said, you know, we say things like um, I say we. It's very general, but I would I would like to think people will agree. Is you know, you'd say, oh, I wish I would have known that ten years ago, or I wish I would have, you know, had this ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And although that dismisses a part of the journey, I get it because sometimes I think the stuff that I've learned in the last ten years. I can't imagine what my early years would have been like if I was back there now with the, with yeah. what I have now, what I believe I have. Um, mm -hmm. So I suppose it's now it's make the most of what time we've got left because everything is unknown to us. Every person, every organ, every sense we have, we never know when the last day will be. So mm -hmm. uh, for that reason, um, make, I'll make the most of it now. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I wasn't going to say something and my head's gone completely blank on it. I'm just saying about making the most of now. I'll think of it later. <laughs> my viewers get used to me doing this. I have blank moments. It's like, what that is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, thank you so much indeed. And uh, I really, really enjoyed having the conversation with you today. And like I said, for anybody else watching, 
um, you know, feel free to reach out. We'll put Matthew's links in the comment. We'll also put the link to the website for, for myself and the book in the comment. And, and again, just reach out. If you need any help or want to talk and you don't feel you've got anybody to talk to, just reach out. Thank you so much to everybody. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye bye.